Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy, and thank you for tuning in. On June 15th, Rebel Media released a video featuring journalist Faith Goldie, which blames soy for the feminization of the men in the West. I will link that video below in the description. I agree about the generational drop in testosterone. And I've discussed this before in previous videos, notably my 2015 video titled Why I Will Take Steroids. That video is also linked below. And I have my theories on why this drop has occurred. They range from the repeat demasculization by modern feminism, uh, environmental pollutants in our air, food, and water, plastics, actual animal hormones that are found in food products such as meat and dairy, uh, increases in obesity, uh, not to mention the rampant partying and binge drinking lifestyle that many young men and women engage in. But to keep this short, at about 4 minutes and 45 seconds into the video, Faith basically blames soy. Researchers, well, they're looking to the food we eat, especially foods that cause changes in our hormones. And bad news, there's one ingredient baked into most of our foods that might be causing the uptick in girly men. Soy. Now, in her defense, she does go on to present research to support her claims. However, I cannot find the links to the studies that she presented so that I can review them myself. In order to see where they were published and by whom, and where the money trail leads, uh, if anywhere. I'd also want to assess any controls used in the research of the overall health and age of the participants, or what percentage of them were actually human. All of this is incredibly important in ascertaining the quality of a piece of research. Now, Faith did mention that she had looked at both human and rodent uh, studies in her video. Keep in mind, while rodent research can inspire human considerations, it isn't conclusive for humans. Human research is always needed to draw conclusions for humans. To go into a little more detail about that. The American Cancer Society discusses soy on their page about breast cancer, and they elaborate that rats process soy differently from people, and the same results have not been seen in people. In the next paragraph, they continue with, So far, no reliable studies have pointed to any dangers from eating soy, and the health benefits appear to outweigh any potential risk. Now, I understand the latter has to do with breast cancer, and Faith's video primarily focuses on testosterone and feminization. But the former statement about animal versus human model research most certainly applies. And what does the large-scale human research actually say about soy and testosterone on healthy men? Let's have a look at that research. First, a meta-analysis of 51 different treatment groups, of which 15 were placebo-controlled, found that neither soy foods nor isoflavone supplements alter measures of total or free testosterone concentrations in men. Furthermore, there were no significant effects from soy protein or isoflavone intake on sex hormone binding globulin or free androgen index either. Based on the results of nine different clinical studies, there is zero evidence that soy isoflavone exposure exerts feminizing effects on men, even at intake levels equal to and considerably higher than are typical for Asian males. And while this paper admits that animal studies do suggest that isoflavones increase the risk of erectile dysfunction, this is not applicable to human males because of differences in isoflavone metabolism between rodents and humans. I keep driving the point home about animal versus human model. It is so very important. Now recall what I said earlier about meat and dairy containing actual animal hormones. Take milk, for instance. Because dairy cows are forced to lactate almost non-stop, the milk they produce contains large amounts of estrogen and progesterone. So, this essentially makes commercial milk comparable to synthetic birth control for women. And the present data on men and children indicates that the estrogens in milk are absorbed and gonadotropin secretion is suppressed, followed by a decrease in testosterone secretion, and this could negatively impact the sexual maturation of prepubescent children. Milk. It does a body good, right? So tell me, Faith, which is worse, and which would be a bigger culprit for the feminization of men in the West? Just some food for thought.
No pun intended. For additional viewing, I have also linked a very comprehensive video in the description that I did in 2016 debunking common soy myths. I highly recommend this video uh, for more information on this topic. Anyhow, let me know what you guys think in the comments below and please share this video so that others can find it. Hell, spread it around to Rebel Media and Faith Goldie's social media. Also, give it a like, uh, which will help it get noticed in the search results. And finally, please subscribe to my channel and hit that little bell button to keep on top of my weekly content updates. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.